The Canadian Fantasy Circus. What was oh. the Canadian Fantasy Circus? Oh, my God. <laughs> well, it was kind of like a um, budget version of uh, the Cirque du Soleil, if you like, you know. A guy I know, Guy Caron, that I'd worked with on a number of other, uh, not theater projects, really, but um, worked on developing. Um, he was a great... He was one of the original partners of Guy La Liberté. Right. And he, uh, Guy, I don't know, they, they had a thing, but Guy Caron went off on his own and was bought out by La Liberté and everything. And, but Guy Caron, he's had, he has a history, he's worked with a number of circuses all over the world, including uh, the Cirque Roncalli, Roncalli it's called. It's a, it's, a, it's a particular form of the theater, that which, of the circus and theater, which we don't really have in America. It's uh, the um, caf cons, the café concert, which is usually, it's like a supper club, which has a show. And a lot of times it involves uh, circus acts in, in the show. I don't know if you ever watched TV Sank. You ever watched the TV Sank from En France? Saturday evening, they have uh, this stupid ass. It is it's like French variety or something. It is tacky beyond belief. <laughs> but it is a pure cafcons, is what it is. It's, it's like nightclub shows, which involve circus acts. And sometimes there'll be a singer and there'll be a juggler. And so be... it's a descendant of musical, burlesque, vaudeville. Yeah. Yes. It's that descent. That's right. Okay. So. Uh, Cirque Roncalli is probably the most well-known uh, of the uh, Cafcons type of show in um, in Europe. And they they but they don't go into established clubs. They go they have their own uh, chapiteau, their own tent structure, their own kitchens, their own uh, everything, the tables, their own wait staff, their own everything. So it's like a whole package: a show, a dinner. Thing and they they play in, in all the major European capitals. You mentioned Cirque Roncalli. I mean, it's like a big deal. And well, Guy's worked for them. He's, he's done shows for them. He's also worked extensively with the Big Apple Circus in New York. Uh, he's a circus guy, right? A Quebecois guy, but and he started with Guy La Liberté on this in the thing. So um, he used to get jobs all the time. Like one job we got was. Um, they had this French guy. God, he was a jerk. But was a, a, a French guy from France. And he was an, an, an illusionist. Right. And so they were developing a show around him. Uh, certain investors uh, from offshoots from the Cirque. And I met a lot of, some of them kind of shady characters, but who cares? Uh, some South American guy, who cares? You know, it, it's what they do, it's wonderful what they do, Robert. They rented a huge rehearsal space in East End Montreal, in uh, down, way down by, oh, don't ask, very far, uh, where they're like warehouses and rented one whole half of a warehouse in which they put in a number of trailers to block off the half. The rest of it was filled with Scott towels. I remember. <laughs> Re towers of Scott towels. Okay. But this was so the and everybody had to sign a um, engagement la confidentialité, you know what I mean? Like a secret mm -hmm. thing you couldn't mention. And uh, the whole thing. And they were developing a number of uh, illusion tricks. Oh, okay. A la David Copperfield. Kind Is this with of. the holograms and the mylar? And the mirror and the... Okay. Talk about smoke and mirrors. I talk mean, about they technology. invented it. Yes, talk about technology. It was... It, actually, it was a great... So Guy said... He asked me if I would work on it to develop uh, the look of these individual numbers. And we went for a kind of look that was... Um, not, not high tech, really, but a kind of a Jules Verne uh, wicked 19th century machine age thing, you know, a kind of a look sort of like that, you know, uh, 
for the, I mean, one was a hanging and had a gallows and a huge, like, set of steps that went up and the guy dropped. Where did he go? He's not even here anymore, you know what I mean? I can't tell If I told you how he did it, I have to kill you. <laughs> no, but, but anyway, we developed, you know, I mean, th those are the kind of jobs. That, that show never even materialized. I mean... But didn't you go take a show to Japan? Yeah. The Canadian Fantasy yeah. Service. That's yeah. another one with Guy, and you took that, that to Japan. That was another one, another one, yeah. So what's it like designing for a piece of theatre? There you're doing a Moliere or a Shakespeare or a George Walker uh, or Michael Cook, and then there you are doing a burlesque, vaudeville, new kind of circus. What's well, it the was, difference? It, I, I loved it. I loved it because it took me out of my my kind of safe zone of, of designing plays that I, I knew, that was about maybe 10 years ago, but I mean, by that time I knew that I could do it. And so it was wonderful uh, to do a, a kind of challenge that really didn't depend on my, this set of moves that I developed, you know, for doing my own, my other designing. I also worked for the, the Casino de, de Montréal here too. Uh, also with, no, that wasn't, that was with um, Norm Latourelle, this guy with the horse show, you know, Cavalia. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, that's Norm. You did that? No, I didn't do this horse show, yeah, but I no, did yeah. shows at this, the casino with Norm.